Hi friends, today I'm going to cover GCP real-time interview questions. In my earlier videos, I have covered AWS and Azure real-time interview questions and real-time scenarios. If you are not aware about my, here is the channel where I covered a lot of real-time scenarios, real-time interview questions, the architectures and also the migration series. It's worth to go through that. Please let me know if you have any recommendations or suggestions. Without further delay, let us jump into our today's topic that is interview questions. So in any kind of interview, any interviewer starts with your project. So this is most frequently asked question almost in any interview. They will ask you to either explain about your migration project or about any cloud project. Whether you are an architect or your DevOps or your administration administrator, they will ask you this. But the answer is different for each role. Here I'm trying to cover for as an architect. So when you have to pick one project, you either you can think of PaaS or IAS. I recommend to explain about the IAS, but I'm giving you two options. In my case, for one of our customers, we had to deploy the application. We already built the application, which is like web application, and they had some web services, and we also uh, built some database, and that particular application was integrated with third-party services as well. So in this case, we had two options, whether to move to the cloud or on-premises. Customer was interested to move to the on-premises, but we have perform some evaluation compared what is their business roadmap for down the four or five, year, five years, what is the expansion possibility to the other countries and uh, what could be their SLA, disaster recovery, what high availability. We felt that they, the customer has to prefer the cloud services. Within the cloud, again, we have pass and years, but the customer did not have the capability of uh, managing a team in each country for the to maintain the infra so that is the reason we recommended pass but there are other parameters uh, such as uh, like how much load the they were actually going to get onto the applications whether that can be dealt with the pass until where that cloud consumption is going to be so by considering all those we felt like pass is a pretty reasonable size they will be requiring so we suggested um, App Engine GC, GCP and uh, App Services if they wanted to go to the Azure. Similarly, for the Web Services, App Engine or App Services, uh, based on the type of cloud, we uh, recommended uh, for that particular customer uh, Azure based on the technology stack they were using. But you can convert the same scenario into whichever the cloud you wanted. Uh, Stories for uh, storing all the videos and pictures and a lot of other data. Uh, unstructured data into the stories which is a blob stories or you can use even the google cloud stories uh, database uh, they were using the sql server at that point of time so we migrated that to the sql azure it's always to cover up with uh, some kind of challenges what you faced in that particular uh, project implementation i mentioned few here performance for example if they uh, they were launching that application for canada and uh, us and few countries in the europe Initially, we wanted to maintain only one uh, region, like which is in the uh, North America, but the performance uh, was too low for the EMEA region guys. So that is the reason we thought of again in expanding. Even the compliance issues were there, so we we thought of again replicating the same thing into the two regions, so that uh, EMEA has separate data center to uh, get the data and maintain the data. Uh, similarly, database encryptions during the migration of the SQL uh, SQL Server to the SQL Azure, there were some kind of encrypted uh, uh, capabilities were not directly supported by the SQL Azure. So free framework related as well, like uh, the framework which we were using under the .NET was not directly supported by the uh, Azure. So we had to upgrade that application as well uh, in terms of the framework. Coming to the IAS based model, user, you try to prefer IAS based if you if you are going to attend the cloud architect type of role. Because PaaS is always simpler architecture, it doesn't mean as big workloads. Everything is uh, 
uh, depending on the cloud vendor right so that is the reason many companies prefer this kind of big loaded applications so i'm giving you one example here one of our customer had almost 80 plus data centers for each country they were maintaining one particular data center it could be a small data center but it's on premises uh, servers they their all applications are deployed onto these data centers with their database uh, web services what not there were plenty of applications they were using desktop applications they were using web applications but legacy applications so each country was maintaining one server so the biggest challenge for the customer was that managing all these data centers and also if they wanted to give some kind of high availability or uh, uh, giving uh, meeting the high SLA that was uh, almost difficult so in this case uh, we came up with the approach that you know they can merge all these data centers into four like uh, for asia pacific region we created a uh, hub called apac emia for all the european countries for north america naa and for china because of the compliance and the regulations from the china we had to create another data center so european based on premises all applications will move to the emia so there were so many uh, vms were being utilized in each data center so that all we replicated onto the cloud for each country but rather than maintaining for the each country we merged into one application there were several uh, changes required because uh, every country was maintaining uh, the database almost 90 95 percent database was uh, same but there were additional columns or additional store procedures queries written for uh, the country specific uh, with the with the specific country requirements so those application level changes were required to be changed and at the same time uh, we are saving lot of money in the maintenance because we rather than maintaining maybe 40 50 data centers in the european region we are just making it one similarly in the north america region similarly in the apac region asia pacific so the uh, though we were spending or investing lot of money to move to the cloud but that eventually coming in the return of investment at a later point of time as monthly uh, maintenance savings. So it's a huge project and program uh, which ran for uh, years almost because uh, we can't go in, uh, in one month or two months. So first we have to start analyzing all the applications. What are the differences uh, between uh, country to country applications? and we had to make a lot of changes in the application level and then uh, we also had to assess the workloads for each data center and the sa same type of uh, missions we had to find on the cloud vendor assume that we are using a gcp here so in the gcp we had to find what are the uh, compute engines uh, suitable for this kind of workloads and also the auto scalers uh, we also used cloud routers so security is the biggest concern and we created VPCs on the GCP and we also created a cloud router to connect any traffic from uh, the on-premises center to the cloud. So only the cl through cloud router the traffic has to be established or the connections has to be established. So these are the few things but uh, I can't explain now within few minutes so you can make your own story. Uh, but just remember as a basic formula you will never jump into any type of solution explain them how you have performed step by step if you are explaining any application whether it is a pass or IES, which i mentioned in the previous slide tell them that first we have gone to the discovery phase where we understood all the system requirements or what are the different missions available in their, their on-premises data centers and we, we also considered uh, what are the influence in game factors like high availability, disaster recovery, failovers, concurrency, and the total amount of data to be moved to the uh, cloud for next few years or anticipated data coming to the uh, database. Then explain them how you have assessed uh, be, com by comparing the pros and cons with on premises Azure, AWS, and GCP, and which one you preferred. Again, uh, how you assessed between PaaS and IES for that particular requirement and then uh, recommending one of the approach with the value proposition where you are saving why you are going with that approach all those things will be presented then you will get into the implementation after convincing the customer then you will get into the implementation 
and in the implementation also you will not implement in one go first you will take some piloting after performing the piloting uh, maybe take one particular workload and convert that into the or migrate it into the cloud and then after performing uh, two months or three months cycle and observing everything what is going wrong or what is going good then you will implement the real project you will not directly get jump into the action even in implementation then you will perf you will build the test servers uat servers and then the number of perform uh, the, the number of machines required for the production in your is all will be done then you will not leave it there you will monitor continuously those applications and see where you can uh, optimize your cloud and where you can save more money and also where that applications is going wrong and if there are any failures how to fix that the continuous monitoring has to be there even after it goes to the production because you are completely moving from one data center to the cloud environment and you have to see and you never know what kind of problems may occur even the, uh, during the monitoring we also need to perform the administration like creating their tickets for developers if they want any new resources or anybody need any extra access on the monitoring tools on the security tools or on the policies or compliances so all those things will be managed by the administration uh, administrative team in each phase you can add more story here uh, for example in the assessment you can mention that you have considered uh, compliances supported by each resource by each cloud and how the security mechanisms worked and how much cost it is being consumed or you know quoted or estimated by each cloud vendor and what are the different type of notifications or automation available with each vendor and what is the high availability and how many regions available availability zones are available uh, what are the logging mechanisms available what is the disaster recovery uh, type of options available with the cloud vendor so all this comes under your evaluation which is part of your assessment so you can add up more and more stories you can even go through my real-time scenario videos there you can understand uh, how deep you can get into so moving on the other question if you are attending a gcp why to prefer gcp over aws or azure even the same way they can ask if you are attending AWS related interview why you have to prefer AWS or why you have to prefer Azure and this could be the evaluation as well so if I have to answer this GCP has also improved uh, a lot in the recent days earlier this was one of the limitation uh, GCP used to have that they had limited regions limited availability zones but now they have drastically increased uh, to the 34 regions and 103 availability zones they have whereas 147 network edge locations available in 200 plus countries this is really good improvement uh, compared to three four years back and uh, gcp offers much better pricing deals compared to aws and does no doubt about that uh, they don't charge uh, hourly basis or pay as, uh, pay as you go type they actually charge minute to minute which is a bigger difference uh, if you want to save a lot of money on the compute engines if you use the same instance for most of the given month you will be eligible for the 30 percent uh, discount uh, whereas you know azure has different models and a a aws has different models like uh, if you reserve an instance for uh, sorry uh, any uh, ec2 or vm instances or workloads for two years three years they will also give you uh, decent uh, discounts like up to 30 percent 40 percent whereas uh, azure if you are owning the licenses like uh, sql server or windows server licenses they will give you up to uh, 60 70 percent discounts as well so you can compare all those uh, factors why you prefer gcp or why you don't prefer other vendors it definitely you no know, uh, aws azure uh, has plenty of the features compared to gcp that is another advantage they have but here your any workload you just compare ec2 versus compute engine versus vm definitely you will see bigger savings in the gcp uh, don't don't look for the one particular uh, instance for example i'm using uh, maybe 100 compute engines then automatically per month there will be huge savings on just straightforward that workload right so think in that angle that will really uh, benefit you a lot if you move to the gcp similarly uh, for jobs that can be stopped and restarted 
uh, that kind of instances can even get up to uh, 50 uh, sorry 80 percent of the discounts so not for the high availability by the way so th these are the few more parameters why you can move to the gcp google cloud is very fast in providing updates about server and security in a better and more efficient manner so these cloud vendors nowadays you know uh, bringing their internal learnings into their cloud as a service that is really helping a lot google maintain billions of uh, uh, containers internally and kubernetes all those stuff so they are very much experienced in all those matters right so definitely gcp can provide better security uh, even for that reason you can prefer gcp and uh, google cloud for cloud platform is exam, uh, exemplary the cloud platform and networks are secured and encrypted with various security measures strong control and security on the of the cloud platform only google supports dns uh, sec so whereas uh, azure and aws supports only dns not dns sec uh, that's a security uh, that's really good feature that which is not available with others gke is considered the most robust kubernetes service because they uh, that is a there's a kit that is uh, built by the google definitely uh, they provide a robust kubernetes service 100 plus terabytes of data analyzed per second by bigquery this is another advantage you can take it as in case if you're moving to any archival or uh, big data related uh, projects this is another advantage to move to the gcp there are plenty of more questions uh, real-time questions in these slides i will cover up in the second part thanks for watching my videos